Hey guys, welcome back to another battery related video. If you're into battery pack testing or performing discharge tests on lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate cells, especially larger untabbed cells that will not fit into a battery analyzer charging station like you see here, then you're definitely going to be interested in this video. Now the tabbed lithium iron phosphate cell that you see right here is a 32700 and many chargers and battery analyzers will not allow you to fit this into the slots. These lithium ion 18650s, they will fit into the charging slots, but sometimes the charging station or analyzer will not charge the cell as fast as you would like or perform a discharge test with a high enough level of current. The only difference between these two cells, besides this one being Chinese and this one being Japanese, is that this has a flat top and this one here has a button top. The flat top does stick up slightly higher than the outside edge where the heat shrink wrap is. Now if you wanted to charge or test this type of a cell, this one's tabbed, all you would have to do is take an alligator clip and connect it up to the tab section. This one over here has a flat top, so there's really no way to connect to it, and the same applies for the button top. Now what many people will do, and I've done myself many times in the past, if I wanted to connect to the cell to charge it or perform a test on it, and I did not have a specially designed holder, I would use a neodymium magnet. You would take the neodymium magnet and you would solder a copper wire to one side of the magnet. Once you solder the wire to the one side, you can then take the magnet and stick it on the cell. And you would have a very good connection. The only problem doing this is that the plating on the neodymium magnets is nickel. It's a triple plating actually. You have one layer of nickel applied first, followed by a layer of copper, and then nickel on the outside for corrosion resistance. If you take a wire like this, made out of copper, it's going to have a certain amount of resistance for every foot. And if you were able to get this exact same wire in nickel, the resistance per foot would be four times as much as copper. So the problem that you have when you do this, when you solder this directly to the magnet, is that the resistance is higher between the wire and the cell. Now right here you can see the magnet has copper showing through in the center. And the reason for that is because if you were going to solder the wire onto this magnet, you would first sand down the layer of nickel, apply a little bit of flux to the area where it's copper, and then you would solder the wire onto that spot. The problem is on the opposite side, you have bright nickel. So you have that extremely thin layer of nickel, maybe four or five microns, between the copper and the battery. And what's going to happen if you draw too much current across that connection, it's going to heat up. So let me show you what I designed that will allow the maximum amount of current to flow between the wire and the cell. And here it is. What you're looking at is a very inexpensive clamp that I picked up at Harbor Freight. I had a 20% off coupon. This entire clamp cost me only $2.50. The bar did stick much further out, but I cut it and added a new rivet because I only needed this to open a certain amount to test some batteries. It also makes it much easier for me to put this inside of a carry bag. Over here is a thin copper strip. The thickness is 0.025 inch or 0.635 millimeter. I designed this one to handle up to 20 amps of current. Of course, you can make a few changes to the thickness of the copper, the size of the wire, to be able to handle more current. The width of the copper strip is around 15 millimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. There's an identical one mounted on this side. Now on this side I added a copper washer. You can see it right over here. And the purpose for that washer is that on many batteries the heat shrink wrapper that goes over is not flush. You can see it goes over. So if I put this right up against the plate as is contact would not be made. This one here is a different story. It's flat. It would go right against the copper with no problem. So what I did is I took a copper washer and using silver bearing solder I soldered it directly to the negative side.
In order to connect the wire to the alligator clip, you're just going to strip off a quarter of an inch or around seven millimeters of the insulation, and you're going to slide it into the tube on the clamp and solder it as shown. So when the cell is inserted into the holder, before you ratchet it down to tighten it, you're going to make sure the washer is in the center of that unwrapped area. This side here sticks out slightly, you would just push it right against the copper. So it's very easy to use. Let me just ratchet it just a little bit just to show you. Let me put it in position, the camera's in the way. Let me just go like that. So you would do that, and you would tighten it down really, really good and you'd have the negative from the battery and the positive from the battery with an extremely low resistance and very secure connection between the copper strip and the cell. And right here you can see the digital multimeter displaying 4.027 volts for this cell. If you'd like to do any discharge tests, all you have to do, connect up to the negative and positive. And when you're done, you just squeeze right here and slide it. Pop in any kind of a cell you want, and you're good to go with a connection that's far superior to using neodymium magnets. And if you're wondering where I found these copper strips, you can get them at a hobby store. K&S Metals sells them for like $3.50 for a 12 inch strip. And you're only going to need about an inch and a half to make each side. The wire gauge is number 14 for both sides. And the alligator clips I picked up online, two or three bucks. So this entire thing cost me about $8 to make. Okay, let me give you a few close-ups. Right here, you can see the copper washer has been soldered to the center of that copper strip. When you solder this in position, make sure the front side of this stays nice and clean. You don't want to have an uneven surface when it makes contact with the cell. Over here, using needle nose, I just bent the copper over the top, and the wire was soldered to the underside of the strip. And you can see it much better in this image right here. After the wire was soldered to the copper, I then took some E6000 adhesive and I put it on the back side of this copper and I made sure this was positioned perfectly and I taped it in position and allowed it to dry overnight. This is what the E6000 looks like. You can find it at home improvement stores, hardware stores, as well as super centers. E6000 adhesive, if you haven't used it, works extremely well and that will not come apart. Over here you can see a nylon tie. The purpose of that, I drilled two holes, one here at the top and one in further, put the nylon tie through, pulled it nice and tight, and now when I pull on the wire if I'm working, it's not going to put any strain on the connection between the copper plate and the wire. Right here's a better look at the nylon tie. You can see where it goes through. One hole there and one on the left. Pull this nice and tight and you have a nice clean job. And right over here, the opposite side was done the exact same way with the adhesive. Nice smooth surface for the positive to push against. Let me show you the alligator clip connection. Right here you can see the flux was applied and the solder it flowed beautifully. But the copper wire slid all the way through. You're going to do the same on both sides. Now all the cells that I tried make excellent contact, but in the event that one is a little bit lower than it should be on the top, I do have on hand one extra washer. I'll hold this vertically, put the battery in position, and just lay one of these washers on top. When I do that, then I'll squeeze this and make it very tight. It'll push down only on that center part. So there's really no reason to ever have a problem making a good connection between the positive and negative on the cell. Guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up. Look over my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you and share this video link on social networking sites. Thank you very much for watching.